I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I have a Mark II Austin Healey Sprite. That means this is the version after the original Frog Eye or Bug Eyed Sprite. And because a lot of people complain when I call a Sprite a Bug Eye, the way I differentiate it, I will call it a Frog Eye if it's right hand drive and a Bug Eye if it's a left hand drive car. This Mark II Sprite hasn't been on the road in 40 years. And even though this is not a full basket case, it does come with a basket case full of parts. So let's take a look. This is a pretty nice looking car. I have seen the hubcaps around here somewhere. Inside the car, you can see that for some reason, the passenger seat has been unbolted and is actually missing all of its upholstery. There is no carpet in the car. There is a basket full of random stuff. The good news is it looks like there's still a set of keys in it. The bad news is the cable to release the bonnet is broken, so I actually haven't seen under the bonnet yet. So the first task is to try to get that open so we can see what we're dealing with. Down in the driver's foot well is the release for the bonnet. That's this cable right here, and no matter how hard I pull on this cable, it will not budge. I could probably pull it hard enough to break the knob off, but that probably wouldn't do any good. Let's see if we can find another way in. Looking into the grill in the center of the screen, you can see a cable. And that cable attaches to that post right there. And that's what needs to be moved over to release the bonnet. So I think I might be able to stick something really long in through the grill and move that over and pop the bonnet open. Okay, I've got a hook and a screwdriver. Let's see if I can get this open with either one of these. I think that did it. Yep. All right, let's see what we've got here. I was told this car hasn't been on the road in 40 years, and I think I believe it, but it looks like someone's been in here and at least been trying to get it to run. You can see there's a new hose there running to the heater core. There's new clamps and a few parts on this hose that goes to the blower motor. Obviously the high tension leads and the throttle cable are not original. Back in the back there, you see the typical corrosion made by the battery going through the firewall there. Somebody has done something really weird here. They have taken the wire that needs to go to the positive side and kind of just jammed it into the cable there. That's a bit, I've never seen that before. And actually look at this, the original battery cable is still here. So they put a new battery cable on it, but they left the original one. The original battery cable is held on by a clamp right there, so that must be why they left it in place. They were too lazy to get to that clamp and remove it. And obviously we need to remove one of these cables. We don't need both of them. It does look like everything is here. Obviously we'll have to go through the brakes. We'll have to go through the carburetor. We'll have to see if the engine is locked up. And let's hope that the radiator is still in good shape. Let's see if we can tell if someone left any water in it. But at least we can't see any antifreeze up here. So let's hope that that was drained. The engine does still have oil in it. Everything in here besides these things that have been updated is just covered with stuff. So I do believe this has been sitting around for a very long time. Here's one neat piece here. This is some yellow tape that was wound around the original wire harnesses and you'll see this in different places they seem to end up in slightly different places on different cars but if you have a mark one midget and, or a mark two sprite uh, you can use this one as maybe an indication of where you might want to put yours if you're trying to do a concord restoration i don't know how i just noticed it but the battery is in some sort of plastic bag they must have gone to the store and never actually took the battery out of the bag but it, it, it's been left hooked up to the car this whole time. I think I'll get the battery out. Let's see if there's a date on it. Okay, I've got the battery out. It does say that it comes with a 50 month warranty, but I'm pretty sure that that has been up. Unfortunately, there is no date marked on it. On the side of it here, it does say remove bag before installation. They did put another ground wire on it and maybe they were having trouble because they did have some of this plastic jammed up into the cable. So maybe they were having connection issues with it. 
This is certainly something that I've never seen done before. Okay, I have my jump pack hooked up so that we have power to the car now. I'll verify that by testing the power at the starter solenoid. So you can see we have 13 volts there. And this car is positive ground, so I've hooked the positive lead on my multimeter to the engine, and I'm using my negative lead to probe around to see if I have power. I'm now going to turn the key to the ignition position, and we'll see if we get power at the coil. Okay, you can hear the fuel pump is actually running. So I'm gonna have to watch over there and make sure that the carbs aren't leaking. Real quick while it's doing that, I'll see if we have power at the coil, which we do. So if the distributor's working, you can see that the float valve is stuck on that carb now and it's leaking all over the place. For now, I'm going to let the carb sit with the fuel filled up in there. You'll be surprised at how many things can be fixed if you just drive your car once in a while or even fill the carburetors with fuel. The gaskets start to swell back up again. It's good to let the valve sit there and fuel. We'll just let that sit there and we'll check back and see if it works any better once it's been exposed to fuel for a while. In the meantime, I'm going to pull the spark plugs out and we'll see if the engine will turn over. I do want to mark these spark plug wires before I pull them off so that I can make sure that I put them back the way that they had them before. I'm going to take just a quick look inside there, see what it looks like. The pistons and the bores actually look perfect still. I'll try to show you that on my tiny boroscope. This is just a camera with a light on it and I can stick it down inside of the cylinder. That is the top of the piston and there you can see the sides of the cylinders look like they are in great shape still. Looks like this engine might have been running a little rich from these deposits that are here on the top of the piston. I don't think that's anything to really worry about. The sides of the piston look in very good shape. I don't see any corrosion in here. I'm going to take my oil can, give the engine a slight amount of oil before I crank it over. Okay, let's pull the starter solenoid and see if the engine turns. Turns over quite nicely. So I think if we have spark, this engine will definitely run. I've pulled the distributor cap off. It actually looks very clean and nice inside there. So I'm gonna leave that in place. The rotor looked very nice as well. So I'm not going to replace that. But I can see that there is corrosion down there on the points. So I am going to install a new set of points in the distributor. Then we can see if the engine will fire up. Take the points out, I want to move it so that the distributor lobe is pushing the points out. So I have the car in fourth gear. I'm just going to bump it until the cam lobe has opened the points all the way. You can see the points are open now. So I'm going to disconnect the condenser, take the points out and put the new points in. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the new points are now installed. I did gap these to 0.015, so I can put the rotor, cap, spark plugs, and spark plug wires back on now. Real quick, I wanna sort out some of this battery wiring. We have this extra ground strap that they put on. Runs from the ground down to the engine, onto one of the starter bolts. I'm gonna put the car up in the air and see if the ground strap that's supposed to connect the car to the engine is there or not. And if it's not, I'll add one. If it's there, I can probably take this strap off. I'm here underneath the car. Here is the original ground strap, connects to the chassis and also to the slave cylinder, which is connected to the transmission. This is pretty dirty. It's uh, obviously covered in oil and grease, which has been leaking from this car for a very long time, but this should still work. So I don't think we need that other ground strap. I think they might've been trying to solve some other problem. So I'm gonna take that off. I have that ground wire removed. Let's check real quick, make sure the starter still runs. Runs fine. I could try to start the car now, but I wanna to attend to the fuel leak. So 
I'm gonna take these uh, air cleaners off, get them out of the way, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do to try to tend to this fuel leak. When dealing with these carburetors, your number one tool is a hammer if you are on the roadside and they start acting up. It only takes a second to use your hammer, so why not try and see if it works? If it doesn't work, then you can move on to something that's gonna take more effort. This carburetor right here is the one that is leaking. It's overflowing, the valve is stuck. So what I'm going to do is turn the fuel pump back on. We'll see it leaking. I'll give it a couple taps with the hammer. We'll see if the valve loosens up and see if the fuel stops. You can see the carb is leaking. Give it a couple taps. The fuel leak has stopped. Let's check the pistons. Pistons do move. So you can see that the choke on this carb is engaged more than this one over here, but they are frozen up and I can't move them. Should still run though. So let's turn the ignition on, give it a crank and see what happens. All right, for the first time, let's see if it's gonna start. see if we can adjust the carburetors a little bit and see if we can try this again. It was a little smoky coming out of the tailpipe. That would be due to the little bit of oil that I put in there. The throttle looks okay. The throttle was not stuck. Let's see if we can tap the jet back up. There we go. Okay, second try. See if our oil pressure builds up. Well, the car runs pretty good now. I did not see the oil pressure go up on the gauge. Sometimes the oil pump just needs primed. There could be a problem with the oil gauge altogether, or there could be a massive leak up there and it's just not getting to the gauge. So I need to go take a look and see what's going on there. Right there is where the oil pressure gauge gets its feed from the block. I don't see any problems with it. There is this rubber hose right here this could be cavitated inside, so it may not be passing the pressure along the hose. This is a pretty simple fix, so I'm just gonna throw one of these on real quick. I've cut that oil hose in half, and I don't see any evidence of any oil having come up here. So I don't think that the oil pump was pumping. Here's what the two ends of the pipe look like without the hose on it. I do have a length of the correct hose, so I'll put this on. Put the hose clamps back on. A problem these cars can develop if they sat for a very long time is that all the oil can drain out of the oil pump. The oil pump dries up and it isn't able to draw oil in when you crank the engine anymore. So to prime the oil pump, you take this bolt out of this banjo fitting that runs down to the oil filter and you just squirt some oil down into that hole. That should fill the oil pump up and then the oil pump should start pumping oil and building up oil pressure. Okay, here's the bolt that goes through that banjo fitting there. There is a crush washer that would go on the other side, so make sure that you find that if it fell down like it did right there, and uh, reinstall that when you're ready. I've got a funnel jammed into that port now, and I'm just going to pour some oil down it. I need to fish my Crush washer back out of there. It was sitting on top of the starter. And now I can reassemble it. With the oil pump primed, let's give this a go again. And there you go, we have oil pressure now. Let it pump oil, make sure that it gets up all the galleys, gets to the top of the engine, lubricates the valves. 
We definitely have an engine that we can work with here. Real quick, let's see what happens. The brakes, yep, brake pedal stuck down now. Clutch, same thing. Well, that's all that I have time for today. The brakes still need to be done. The clutch needs to be done. We need to put water in here, see if anything's leaking. I am going to take this car much further than I have the barn fine sprites. We'll take this car and turn it into a real driver quality car. And I'm gonna bring you along for the whole adventure. So if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.